Hi, this is a summary slide of actually questions on uh, what we've just been through in the first, you know, 30 so uh, video clips, which has mostly been on, on supply chain memes, you know, individual building block concepts about um, we can't get paid for service value if we don't know what the service value equation is for the niche and then how those service value metrics actually lower uh, some are all the hidden costs that, that our customers have and improve their uptime economics and customer retention economics and so forth. Um, so having been through these video clips, I would like to ask you to reflect on a few questions. First of all, is the life cycle of where we are, and I'll, I'll get in the next section, uh, we'll talk a lot about what, what you know, industry life cycles are, life cycles even for ideas. Um, uh, so we'll get a little more fluent on that. But but let's just say, is, is our industry at a place where supply is too great, demand is saturated, if not declining or under a lot of pressure, um, and customers are consolidating, they're coming back to us and, and out of not even knowing what else to do, but asking for lower prices, thinking somehow that'll help them survive. In other words, they, they want to take our bottom line and put it on their bottom line and, and, and think that that's going to be a long-term solution. Um, so in a, in a world like that, it, doesn't it make sense to to consider at least how we should go out and sell more effectively in a, uh, uh, a transactional game box? In other words, if the customer still wants to, you know, keep two, three guys on the hook and play them off against one another, at least in that game, you know, shouldn't we be able to get the biggest share and get last look an extra point or two? And you know, if if we get the extra point or two, it still is it's it's a burr under their saddle. I mean, people just don't want to pay a higher price, and I don't blame them, and they don't have to, because then the next question is, well, yes, we are a higher price, but we're still the best economic value. I know it, you now know it, and and you don't like that, so why settle for that? Why don't we get a best economic value and a lower price? But to do that, I have to have all your business. We have to get married. And if we get married and work on supply chain math together, we can get my cost to serve down so much that I can afford to give you a lower price. Uh, so uh, it, are, it isn't, isn't the world asking for that? And certainly that's what swept across some of the bigger channels. If you look at consumer goods, if you didn't figure out how to do continuous replenishment like Walmart, Walmart just put you out of business. And a lot of people said, I, I can't change, so Walmart put, just put them out of business. So that's kind of where we are, and I, I think that it's time for us to really get our heads around. Um, if our customers have vice presidents of supply chain, we need vice presidents of service value solutions. And we've got to get fluent with the vocabulary, and we've got to be, be able to, to give the customers their next biggest need, as opposed to you know continue to focus on trying to sell commodity products for a price. And when it comes to doing that, there have got to be some customers who may be on the cusp. That means, yes, they're traditional uh, bid, bark, and buy kind of buyers, but it's they're no fools, and they, they, they've been hearing and know about supply chain con concepts. They see in other aspects of their lives and so forth, and, and, and they're, they're amenable you know, to being switched if we can give them a compelling case. But most distributors, because they're so unfocused, they're trying to sell too many customers the same standard generic service value proposition, they don't have specific great service for anybody. So if we can figure out how to do customer niching, and 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 provide and tune our service to the niche, then that's our ticket, you know, to to converting the people on the cusp uh, to to becoming our partners. Um, and I, I'll ask another question, which is, as I talk about it, this, I'm sure a lot of people are going, oh, I don't get it, I don't believe it, I don't want to believe it. And what's really going on is this goes against our traditional faith. You know, for how many years have we been? product pushing centric sales promotions product spiffs feed on the street every customer is a good customer sell 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 and all focused on margin dollars from any and everywhere and even margin percent and we saw in value exchange management there's no correlation at all between margin percent and net profitability some of the guys with the highest margin percent actually had even higher costs to serve for for losses so in that kind of environment, we, we have got to get in touch with our unspoken assumptions, our faith belief system, if you will, 
and to sort of overhaul it. I mean, it, you know, some things are good. It's not like it's an either or. It's always and both and more, and, and, and we've got to adapt. So going forward, let's ask ourselves, what are unspoken faith-based solutions or, or assumptions? And uh, get in touch with them and, and just gently uh, uh, overhaul them. And, and get them up to date with what's really going on out there with our customer base. So that's the end of the section. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.